Hello and a warm welcome to our special conversations in the run up to the Independence Day where we are talking to the heads of various institutes and ministries. In today's episode, we have with us a very special person, Secretary to the Government of India in the Ministry of Earth Sciences. I welcome Mr. Madhava Nair Rajivan. I welcome you on the program. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nair, uh, Ministry of Earth Sciences is a fairly new ministry which was formed in 2006. So from 2006 to 2020, if you look at the journey, uh, how has it been? How fulfilling has it been? It's a really uh, uh, significant uh, achievements we have uh, done for the last 14 years. In uh, 2006, uh, at that time there was a Department of Ocean Development, which were uh, responsible for relief for ocean. And uh, India Meteorology Department, India Meteorology Department, IAT in Pune, that's one center in Noida. And it's all related to weather and climate services. It was part of DST, Department of Science and Technology. So in 2006, government has took a decision. If we talk about air, uh, air system science, it uh, comprises of atmosphere, ocean, hydrosphere. Uh, so if you really want to do a service to the nation, you should think of holistically every, all the aspects of earth system. Uh, so, uh, uh, so atmosphere part part of uh, DST and Department Ocean Development separate in ministry doesn't really go well. So they decided to merge it together, and it was a very good decision. And 2006, uh, the, all the concerned uh, institutions and departments uh, came together, and uh, Ministry of Science was formed. Since then, we achieved tremendous uh, made uh, tremendous achievements. But if you look at the, the various programs which have been incorporated as what you call the integrated programs, uh, what are those major programs which, which, are real, which are the real highlights of the ministry? See, we, we run four major programs in the ministry. One is on weather and uh, climate services. Second is on ocean services which include development of ocean technology. A third is on uh, earthquake, that means seismology and uh, geoscience. And fourth is polar science. And um, so this is the all, it, it will cover everything of uh, earth system science. Then the fifth component, we also do a small R&D program in which we support universities and institutions for the R&D work. So these are the five major programs we so do. So this particular R&D work which you are saying where you collaborate with uh, universities, so you encourage uh, students to come and study and how yeah, is it like? Actually, uh, basically it is we will be funding their research projects okay. and they will be submitting proposals, we will be funding them and also there is a training program for them and um, they can come and work with our institutions and do their PhD etc. Not many people uh, know about the exact work which is uh, really done by the Ministry of Earth Sciences mm -hmm. and it's a fairly new ministry as we discussed. Yeah. Various programs which have been amalgamated and put together. So uh, for a common man to understand that what exactly is the ministry doing and how does it uh, really translate in terms of uh, jobs maybe, in terms of uh, what it is giving out to the students, uh, how would you really define that? Uh, well, uh, system science basically it, uh, it, it touches on uh, our human day-to-day -day life. For example, weather. When you go out, we want to know what is the weather today. It's raining or it will be hot, it will be cold. And, uh, and also ocean has a huge wealth. Uh, ocean resources, uh, we are not taped really. And uh, we are not really uh, gone out and discovered what is there inside the ocean. And uh, so ocean gives you a lot of uh, energy, uh, minerals and, uh, and uh, non-living resources, living resources. It's a hu huge... Uh, well, actually, ocean, and uh, and as far as, as I told, weather and climate services also it touches the human uh, being. And uh, for example, it can help farmers. It can help, for example, forecast for uh, fishermen. It helps fishermen going out. They can be useful, and uh, any application, any general application for general weather forecasts are very useful. And also, uh, the most important thing is disaster management, right. saving people from uh, disaster, natural disaster. For example. Tropical cyclone. This year we had two uh, cyclones, very huge cyclone, one in Ufan, which we gone to West Bengal, another one in Maharashtra, the Sarga. Both uh, we could give a very exact forecast, very accurate forecast, almost four, five, four to five days in advance, uh, which the government took uh, use of it and uh, they could uh, really help people and they could save people. Uh, thousands but, of people. But when you talk about uh, accurate warning uh, systems being in place, and which is why it has helped so many people, whether it was in the cyclone hit areas or whether it was elsewhere. Uh, how is this really possible? Uh, uh, do we, uh, does a common man understand that do we have some special kind of computers which are doing this? Or do you really have special equipments 
in place which which are there to ensure all this yeah, weather weather prediction science science of weather prediction is very complex and highly advanced science people think that no they look at the sky and give some forecast or uh, they have small instruments here and there and <laughs> they predict it's not so it's a highly advanced very complex science which we are we are now perfecting we are, we are not i am not saying that we are perfected but we are perfecting uh, especially last 10 10 15 years uh, especially after this uh, earth science ministry has formed the improvement uh, significant achievements which we made in weather science weather forecast is tremendous mainly because we could develop adopt more uh, mathematical models uh, we use mathematical model for prediction okay. it's a global model uh, there are some regional models and uh, what we use the present uh, uh, weather prediction models are the state of the, the models and which can be compared to any 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 weather prediction officers in any other country like us or uk and to run this model and we need observations so we have huge observations observational network in india and uh, thanks to uh, a un um, uh, agreement all the countries who take up survey weather observation should really exchange the data right so our data goes to pakistan pakistan data comes to us our data goes to us us data comes to us it's all real time it's all real time they we all take observations fixed time morning 5:30 8:30 11:30 11 and these observations are exchanged okay. throughout the so we need observations we need models so we have best of best models we have best of best observations and we also have a lot of satellites not only our indian satellite like insat we have satellites of other countries including um, china, europe us japan china all they have satellites so it's almost like a technological collaboration it's a technological with collaboration without because atmosphere doesn't have boundaries mm-hmm. whether cannot understand you know i am uh, giving uh, rain in pakistan or uh-huh. india it doesn't understand the boundaries so we should not have boundaries in weather forecast so it, we have a lot of good uh, collaboration and that we are making use of it so then to run this model is a highly complex mathematical model highly complex mathematical model to run this we need huge computers i'll tell you why we did not advance about 15 years back because we did not have funds money to buy computers okay. frankly speaking okay. i should admit that so once since this ministry has come now last it especially last 5 6 years we have pumped a lot of money to buy biggest computers now we have a computer with of of the size of 10 petaflop we called okay uh, with the speed how the computer speed is is a cost about 500 crore or so it is a best computer in this country and one of the best in the whole world among if you consider only the weather prediction officers right uh, only america UK and Japan have better computing facility than us. And then comes then India. Then fourth we are the fourth place in terms of computing power. Okay. Mainly because this computing power and because we have good models and we have good observation, we are able to now make good predictions. But weather forecast are can go wrong. It's not a 100% correct forecast we cannot make. So sometimes we go for wrong, but if you see the performance last 10 years we have been improving most of the weather predictions which i have seen like you're saying in the last 10 years of course have been very precise quite accurate if not 100% then up to at least 98% we've seen that the precision is there but what are the challenges uh, which you really see in the coming years as far as weather warning systems are concerned yeah, so which are the areas which where where the country needs to work upon yeah so only is uh, improving forecast for cyclones we are almost perfected this for my feeling uh, okay. but still there are some issues mm-hmm. but uh, prediction of heavy rain for for some flash floods is one of the gray areas where we need to really concentrate okay and uh, heat waves also we do extremely well okay and uh, so some 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 specific gray areas we have identified so prediction of disaster natural disasters extreme weather events that is mm-hmm. the main concern for us for that we need to really improve these models and also people want now forecast at very high, very high resolution mm-hmm. people want that uh, delhi not only in delhi if you say delhi weather no people won't like it they want what will be weather at arkepuram what right. will be the weather at chandni chowk that kind of information 1 km size or 500 m size mm-hmm. so that is a, a huge challenge similarly we give i said told that we give a lot of weather for services for the farmers right. we give, we reach up to almost 5 crore farmers every day no no mm-hmm. twice in a day twice in a week and uh, so now we we are expanding the network now farmers want forecast at their back at the at their farm is a which it may be of a very small size so at present we are giving at uh, district level now we are entering into a block level okay. uh, so we are giving forecast block and gradually at the gradually the, the so block level then people well. uh, they will expect the panchayat level then ultimately farm level they mm-hmm. want a forecast at farm level it will be too difficult for us but we are attempting 
At least from block level now we have started doing it. So finally we may have to give it at least Panjayat level. That's, that's a significant breakthrough what, you, what you're saying that uh, you know at the farm level it will be possible to predict the weather. Of course it's uh, good news uh, for the farmers and they have lots uh, to benefit uh, from. But let's take a break at this point of time. When we return we continue this conversation with Mr. Madhavan Nair Rajivan on the ocean science and seismology as well. Stay with us. India Science is an internet-based science TV channel initiated by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, implemented and managed by Vikyan Prasar. India Science on the URL www.indiascience.in is a bilingual channel with content in Hindi and English. It can be accessed on any internet-enabled device. This video platform is dedicated to science and technology knowledge dissemination with a strong commitment to spreading scientific awareness, especially with Indian perspectives, ethos and cultural context. The India Science mobile app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store and Apple Store. Welcome back after the break and we are in conversation to, with the Secretary of the Government of India to the Ministry of Earth Sciences, Mr. Madhavan Nair Rajivan. He is also Chairman of ESSO and also the Chairman of the Earth Commission. Uh, welcome back again, uh, Mr. Rajivan. Uh, to continue with our conversation on ocean science, like uh, we spoke about how weather warning systems in the country have improved. but. Uh, a lot of people do not know as to what is happening as far as exploration in ocean is concerned. What is the actual work which is being done in the ocean yeah, science? Uh, ocean, as far as ocean is concerned, we also, we have been doing last 30, 30 almost 30, 35 years, we have <coughs> been doing a lot of good work. Uh, one is ocean services. Ocean services mean, for example, fishermen going out to the sea. And so we need to provide them where they have to go and catch more fish. So it's called potential fish, uh, fishing zone advisories that we give. And that is very, very, very much benefited for them. And second thing is uh, disasters. For some, when they go out, they may meet some uh, weather storm or uh, any high waves, etc. So we need to really give. It's called ocean state forecast. Right. So we provide the ocean state. And not only the fishermen going from uh, land, uh, but ships may be plying. There will be a lot of small, small uh, um, boats may be going. So for them, we need to really give the warnings, etc. It's called ocean state for. It's called ocean services. Okay. And uh, second thing is ocean survey. We need to really explore oceans around mm -hmm. us and uh, to see whether we, we can really derive energy, we can derive minerals, etc. But I think fairly, uh, as far as the ocean survey is concerned, is it something which is very new? Very new. Uh, for very the new. Ministry very as new. Well? Ocean survey is very new. And we have been silently doing this ocean survey. And for example, uh, uh, we have a, a term called economically, ex exclusively economic zone, EEZ. There's a 200 nautical mile from our uh, land, uh, mm -hmm. so the boundary of uh, land. And uh, uh, that area is be belongs to our country. Okay. And whatever it is there inside, it, is, uh, it belongs to our country. And so we need to really know what is really there. So the so-called, it's called EEZ survey. So we have almost completed EEZ survey. Okay. So almost complete, maybe about 10% uh, is remaining, that will complete another few months. Mm -hmm. So that will be a, a huge achievement which we have made. And the findings of the survey, how do you really share it in the public domain? At present it is not available in public domain. Okay. And because EZ data, especially the subsurface uh, data, mm -hmm. it cannot be shared with public. Uh, okay. so it's, uh, it's only the, uh, the top of the uh, water, whatever parameter you measure, you can share. Okay. Because it, 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 it leads to security issues. Right. So we do not, uh, we have to take permission to share. Okay. That's number one. Number two is uh, we have uh, around us, we have a lot of minerals. So we have an organization called, it's a UN organization called International Seabed Authority. Okay. They give uh, permissions or contracts to different countries to explore some areas for getting minerals out. Okay. And so we have a contract, we are um, almost uh, 20 years back, we got a mineral uh, contract for exploring minerals and over central Indian Ocean. There are a lot of, it's called polymetallic nodules. Okay. And if you really, so we have explored that area now. So about 75,000 square kilometer is given to us. So for going there and also to go, uh, to, 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 to peep into the 6,000 kilo, 6, kilometer down, 
we need a lot of technology. So we have developed the technology. We also taken polymetric nodules out okay. and we know how to process it. We have a lab in CSI, a lab in Bhubaneswar. They helped us to process it. So, so we have everything. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we present, we don't have a, a kind of a permissions or laws to exploit it. I'm making an operational mining. Right. So we have only explored it. So we know how much min uh, minerals are available and how much it will cost us if we really explore everything, exploit everything. And so that kind of work, a very tremendous work which they have done. Many countries have not done. So only very few countries, a very advanced countries like UK, France, uh, Germany, those only very few countries, of course, including China, they have done some exploration work. So that kind of exploration, but we have, we have been doing it very silently, that work. So now once the uh, UN comes out with a, a rule saying that now countries can start exploiting it, okay. we are ready. Okay. We have technology, it's, it's called deep sea mining system we call. Uh, somebody has to go down with the ship, uh, some instrument has to go, take it out and uh, take it, uh, bring back to the ship and process it and bring back to the labs like in uh, Bhuneshwar and process. And what we will get is copper, uh, metals like copper, nickel, cobalt, right. manganese. It is huge, in, uh, huge money it involves. So we, uh, India does have a lot of mineral potential and the ocean survey ensures that whatever is there, we, we have it on the paper ready. So. You were saying that UN is going to devise some laws after which, you know, it will be left to the countries how they take it forward. Yes. So do the individual countries also need to come out with certain laws when, when it comes to mineral exploration? Yes, yes. We have our own uh, laws and uh, so we have to, uh, whatever we do, within, it should be within our uh, existing laws. Okay. And uh, so at present, uh, our laws permit that we can go out and explore the minerals in the deep ocean. We have been doing but it. But Mr. Rajiv, what, what are the uh, biggest challenges which you see uh, as far as the ocean science is concerned? Uh, which are the gap areas where, where the country needs to work on or where the institutes uh, need to work on, maybe in terms of technology? Uh, how do you really see yeah, that? See, ocean science is very expensive science. It's, uh, you need a huge money. You need ships. We have seven ships we have, ministry, we have okay. seven big ships. And we use that ships. To maintain the ship itself is very costly. If, even if you, now the COVID has come, the ships, we are not able to go there with the ship at outside. The ships are anchored at different places. Even anchoring, we will spend 100 crore. My God. Okay. That's so a huge, we, uh, sum. <laughs> huge sum. So even to keep it in a garage, you need money. Okay. <laughs> so it's a huge sum. But why so, do you say that you need so much of money even when you have to anchor the, the ship? Because the engine the cannot way. be stopped. You need uh, peop uh, crew people. Uh, we are, we are uh, given the contact with the shipping operation of India. Those people should be there in the ship. You cannot leave ship as it is. Mm. So, an engine has to be on. Basically on the maintenance, maintenance side. Maintenance, maintenance, right. right. And if you, then you can think of going with the people uh, 30 days, 40 days out, how much money is required. It's a huge investment you need. Right. And, but we have been doing extremely well. But what we need is, of, and also we have put a lot of observation and network in ocean. Like, uh, like over land, we are putting observation network. We have observations over oceans also. Okay. It's called ocean data buoys. We have Argo floats. So all highly sophisticated instrument. Mm. Even to buy one instrument is very costly, and to maintain it again, it is very costly. So, so investment in ocean is very huge. Right. So, but a country like India should invest more and more. Right. I, and the second important uh, problem is what we have is the technology. Right. We cannot go to a shop and buy a technology. It's not available. Atmospheric science, well, for example, weather, for example, automatic weather station. We can go to a shop and buy. It's uh, really available. Ocean technology, it's not available because like uh, 40 years, 50 years back, like space technology, people are not sharing the knowledge. Mm. Same way as ocean technology. Okay. Nobody will share it. So you're saying that other countries are also reluctant on sharing the so knowledge. No about sharing of technology, knowledge with uh, any other country. So we have to learn ourselves, make mistakes and develop ourselves. But uh, uh, before we go to another break, uh, my one last question to you before the break is that uh, you obviously need a very specialized manpower for doing this. Yes. How about the scientists? How about the technological uh, manpower which is involved? How do you really train them? How, what kind of specialization do they really know? Because I'm sure all the, I mean, the lakhs and lakhs of people who are going to watch this program, uh, the students would be wondering how to get into this niche area. Yeah, so for doing the ocean science, for example, giving forecasts, etc., we need people with uh, physics, maths, and oceanography background. Okay. For doing technology development, we need people with engineering background, basically uh, mechanical, electrical, uh, communication, sorry, it may not be communication, but electrical uh, and uh, mechanical kind of people we need. And we have an institute in Chennai, it's called National Institute of Ocean Technology. It's last 25 years we have been working. 
and they have about 150 good scientists, uh, okay. engineers, and they have been doing a lot of good work. And uh, and uh, we will be happy to invite more people to the institute, and also they can be participate. They can also participate in our. Uh, cruises which we normally do. I'm sure the when ship. the students watch uh, this program and the, the upcoming and the budding engineers who want to uh, specialize in the in the field of uh, ocean science, I'm sure they would be delighted to hear what you've yeah. said. It's a very challenging job. Right. It's a challenging uh, job, but uh, the government of India is investing really on, on this uh, niche area, uh, but uh, many more milestones to be covered. But let's take a break at this point of time when we return. We talk about seismology and the science of earthquakes. Have you really understood that well? Back in a moment. India Science is an internet-based science TV channel initiated by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, implemented and managed by Vikyan Prasar. India Science on the URL www.indiascience.in is a bilingual channel with content in Hindi and English. It can be accessed on any internet-enabled device. This video platform is dedicated to science and technology knowledge dissemination with a strong commitment to spreading scientific awareness, especially with Indian perspectives, ethos and cultural context. The India Science mobile app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store and Apple Store. Welcome back after the break. We are in conversation with Madhavan Nair Rajivan, who is the Secretary to the Ministry of Earth Sciences. He is also the Chairman of ESSO and also the Chairman of the Earth Commission. Uh, talking to you, sir, about uh, seismology and a uh, lot of work is being done in polar science as well. We would like to understand uh, the milestones which have been achieved uh, in this particular aspect. Uh, as far as seismology is concerned, I see you know that our country, especially in northern part, uh, close to Himalayas, is a very earthquake uh, prone area. Uh, we divide the country into five zones, zone one, two, three, four, so two, three, four, five, Delhi comes in zone four. And uh, so, at present, we don't have good science or technology to predict the earthquake. We, we cannot really predict when it will, uh, next earthquake will happen. But we have now uh, good technology to say when earthquake happened, we can immediately tell the people that earthquake has really happened. And uh, of course, we have, uh, a lot of research is going on to get some kind of precursors uh, before earthquake happens. So, a lot mm -hmm. of research, not only in India, worldwide research is going on. Probably one fine morning, may, we may be able to do it, but uh, at least for next year, few years, it will not happen. But and why do you think, uh, uh, Mr. Rajivan, is so difficult to predict uh, an earthquake? We, we do not have those kind of specialized equipments. Not, or uh, not question of uh, equipment. We are not able to get a good precursors. Uh, okay. Uh, so, we sh some, some indication should be there that uh, this, uh, if, you, if this happened, then uh, followed, it will be followed by an earthquake. Mm -hmm. uh, earthquake happens, it's, a, it's a basically uh, energy development, you know, energy build up and one fine morning the energy will be released. So when it will be released, we don't know. Energy, we know, we can measure how the energy is getting built up under the earth and we don't know but when this energy will be released. When the energy is released, only the earthquake happens. So a lot of work is being done as far as the seismological studies are concerned. But what about polar science? How is India really making a difference at the global level as far as polar science yeah. is concerned? Polar, polar region is also very important for not only for India, for the whole glo global climate. Uh, we, we have three poles, Arctic, Antarctic and Himalayas we call the third pole. Uh, Himalaya is very important for all, uh, all of us because it's, it's, it contains uh, ice, uh, snow, uh, and uh, glaciers, so Himalaya also becomes very important. And uh, as far as India is concerned, for polar science, India is a leading country. For example, in Antarctica, we started going in Antarctica in 1980s, early 80s. Mm. We first built a, a, a research station, Dashna Gangotri. And uh, so we are the first few countries who have gone there. Mm. And uh, we are a part of Antarctica Treaty now. India is a part of Antarctica Treaty, who signed the Antarctica Treaty. So from 80s, early 1980s, we have been going there. Now the Deshna Yangotri has gone under the uh, snow. So the station has been uh, has disappeared. We have now two more stations called Maitri and Bharati. Okay. Maitri also become very old, uh, mm -hmm. almost 30 years now. 
and um, Bharati is a very new one. So we have two stations and we, uh, we send about 100 to 120 people every year. Okay. So they go there, take observations and uh, so Antarctica is very important. We have been doing, we have, we have been doing a lot of good work. Mm. And we also now ventured into Arctic. Arctic okay. is a very new grey area and 2008 we established a new station there. It's called Himadri and uh, in a, it's a place uh, it's called Svalbard in Norway. So they've given us a uh, small, small land and a small building. So we have set up an observatory there. So there we go only during summer period, our okay. summer period. Okay. Uh, winter, winter we cannot go there. So that observations are also we have been doing. And we do we do a lot of good work in uh, Arctic research. Okay. And also uh, we have set up a new station in uh, Himalayas. Okay. We have gone up to 4.5 kilometer. I, I remember that I have gone in a helicopter there gone for inauguration etc so people go there and uh, uh, what the yeah that the station is called himansh and uh, so the purpose of that himansh observatory is to find out the glacier melting okay uh, what is the dynamics of glaciers right. uh, we know that people are saying what extent it is what happening. extent is what is the physics behind it dynamics mm -hmm. behind it and uh, so we have people are telling about himalayan glaciers are melting i uh, won't find morning all water will come out and all <laughs> so so we want to know really what is really happening so that mm -hmm. so uh, uh, Memo is doing a lot of good work in polar science, uh, especially Arctic and Himalayas and Antarctic. So what is the next uh, milestone uh, if you look at the entire ministry in totality? Uh, how, how would you really uh, briefly summarize the kind of achievement which, which you have really gained at the ministry level? Yeah, before that I would like to add two more uh, yes. good areas where we have, be, uh, we have been working. One is on coastal research. Okay. You know, coast, Indian coasts are very important. You know, it's also vulnerable to um, uh, storms and uh, sea erosion, etc., and sea level rise, etc. So we have a center in Chennai, National Center for Coastal Research. They have been doing a lot of good work, okay. and especially studying on how the sea levels are uh, really eroding the sea, the sea coast. And also, they have been doing a lot of work on uh, beach restoration. We okay. have done recently a beach restoration of Puducherry. That's fairly a new area. Oh, a new area, beach restoration. Puducherry, I don't know, Puducherry. Mm, yeah, yeah. The one fine morning there, the beach has disappeared. Mm. So they told us that how can, uh, what it happened and how we can uh, restore it. So we have done a good work and now the beach has come back. Okay. We have spent about 25 crore. We have developed some kind of technology, put it on the sea and uh, that will allow, uh, allow not too big waves to come and it will break. So the sea, the sea, the beach has come back. So beach restoration kind of work. That also we have been, we are doing it. And we have another small center in uh, uh, Kochi. It's called uh, center, center for Marine Living Resources. Okay. So we go out in the ship. We have a special ship, uh, Sagar Sambada. With the ship, we go there and explore the min uh, living resources like uh, okay. uh, different kinds of fishes, etc. So the the inventory. Mm -hmm. Basically, inventory of living resources we are making. There also we are doing reasonably good job. And all good work is done so silently that not many people know. Yeah. And we which is where I think Vigyan Prasad is yeah, making a difference. Yeah, good, good. No, that's good. <laughs> so. But uh, this Independence Day special, uh, uh, what is your message, uh, Mr. Rajivan, to all the people who are going to watch this program? And uh, you've really given us a minefield of information today. But what is your message uh, to the people this Independence Day? Uh, message is that, you know, uh, uh, our earth, earth system science can do many things for the society and uh, we have been doing it very silently and uh, we, we have to commit for more more and more work research work as well as application for uh, the society we have to save people we have to find resources for the people for some bringing wealth etc we have to pe help people like farmers fishermen etc so we have a lot of our ministry has a lot of potential to help people so which we are committed so we will do more and uh, uh, i'm very sure with the support from the government of india with more funding and support of human resources we will be delivering more and more products for a common person i'm sure you will come out with many more gems and as uh, you just said that science does have an impact on the lives of the common man and that's the goal how to make the lives better with each passing day uh, so that's it on this special conversation with uh, madhavan nai rajivan it was a pleasure talking to you, you sir you. and wish you all viewers a very happy independence day <laughs>